Recently, my wife and I went on a, uh, a photo safari trip type thing, and we went to uh, Joshua Tree Park with um, uh, the This Week in Photography crowd. And, you know, we had a great time. And although my wife was taking pictures, I opted to shoot some behind the scenes video. And the event was uh, sponsored by um, Frederick Van Johnson and also um, Joseph Lenaschke, and w we had a great time. But after showing the video, some people were looking at my colors, and they're like, wow, uh, how'd, you, how'd you do that? And uh, what I wanted to do is kind of walk through some of the color correction things and show you the difference between the built-in three-way color corrector in Final Cut and Magic Bullet Looks, which is by Red Giant Software. So um, here's the shot we're gonna um, we're gonna take a look at here. It's this one, and it's our model that they had hired for the weekend to uh, give all the photographers something to shoot. Her name is Latoya Hawthorne. She's from LA. Great woman. We uh, really enjoyed um, being with her. So um, what I want to do is I'm gonna take this shot here, and I'm gonna make a copy of it because we're gonna apply two totally different looks to this thing. And on the upper version of this, I'm gonna go into my effects, video filters color correction and we're going to use the basic built-in three-way color corrector inside of Final Cut. Now if you look at the shot you, it, it looks pretty pale and, and, if, and the reason for that is that when you're shooting with the digital SLRs they really advise you to there's a couple of places online where you can get these tutorials on how to set up the camera so that it'll give you more dynamic range when you're actually color correcting. And I'm kind of old school. I understand that if I were to stop calling it color correcting and call it grading, I could actually charge more for it. But I still call it color correction. So here's your basic shot. And if I look at it down here on my RGB parade or my waveform, you could see it's it doesn't it has it's not a lot of low end, not a lot of blacks, not a lot of high end. It's really this sort of kind of safe middle ground. And that is what's going to give us some, uh, some really good latitude for correcting this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by going to the blacks as I usually do. And I'm going to, in my three way on the blacks wheel, I'm going to just scroll this guy down. And I'm just going to push it down a little. It's going to get dark all, you know, right in the beginning, but that's okay. Because we're going to counteract that blackness by coming up here in the mids and I'm going to pull this up. Now what you find when you do that, when you pump up the mids, is you immediately get a very washed out picture. And I believe that that's why Apple is putting this saturation control right below the mids because anytime you pump those mids you probably want to give it more saturation to kind of put the life back into the image. So there's a real simple grade, okay? I, I push the blacks down a little bit to give it a little punch. I brought up the levels with the mids, and I can pull the, the, the high end up too, but really I don't need that much. See, I can, it's really easy to overdo that. So we're going to bring this down, bring it down, and you do this a lot by eye, but the more you do it, the more you start to look at your scopes down here. You want a little bit on the black, you want a, maybe a little something touching the white, if of course there's anything white. So anyway, there's your basic grade. And using this little checkbox by the eyeball, I can look at it before. Wow. And after. A world of difference. A whole world of difference. So that's the three-way color corrector inside of Final Cut. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to this clip here and I'm going to use Control uh, B to make that clip inactive and see right through it. And now we're going to apply a totally different filter to the layer right below it. And this time we're going to go for Video Filters, Magic Bullet, Looks, and here's the magic bullet filter. Now, if you haven't used this before, I would really recommend playing with it. I think they have a trial. I'm not really sure. But anyway, uh, once you load it in here, it's one of these filters where you have to click the button and then it takes over your screen. Now, here's our frame. And here's a much bigger parade scope. And this is the way Magic Bullet works. It, it, it works on kind of a traditional camera metaphor. You have your subject, you have your matte box, you have your lens, you have your camera, and you have your post-production processing. Now, Magic Bullet has all kinds of cool presets that you can, you know, download and look at here. But frankly, we're just going to do some simple adjustments here. And these are great. I mean, you could do some fun, crazy looks, but we're just going to fix this shot here. And the way I like to do that is I start on the subject tab. I come over to the other side. So I got subject, mat, lens, camera, post, just like I have down here. Subject, mat, lens, camera, post. And I'm going to start with the lift gamma gain. And when I double click on that, it puts this little chiclet over here, this little tile, under the subject.
Now, in much the same way that I had three wheels in the three-way color corrector, I have the same thing here. So I'm going to take my, gain, my lift, and I'm going to just pull that down quite a bit. And then I'm going to take my gamma, and I'm going to slide that up. Unfortunately, I can't use the scroll ball on my mouse. And I might do a little bit in the gain, but it doesn't need that much. Really just easy to taste. And there we go. Now, in the same way, I want the I want to put a little chroma back into it. So I'm going to come over here. And instead of using the saturation tool, which works easy enough, and quite frankly, you could do a lot with it, just going boom, and then you get a little life in. But you'll notice Latoya's, Lati's skin is... It gets orange really quick, and this is something that I find to be really common with African-American skin. It's really easy to kind of push it toward that kind of orange, you know, I say oompa loompa, and I don't mean any disrespect, but people don't look good orange. So what I'm going to do is instead, I'm going to go to the three-way color corrector tool here, and now I have my shadow color, or my lift, my mid-tone color, or my gamma, and my highlight color, or my gain. And what I have found is that when you start when you start messing around with color, especially with African American skin, you got to be really careful about pushing things too orange. So what I'm going to do to put some color in the rocks back here, I'm going to go to the shadow color and I'm going to push it just a little bit toward the red. I'm not going to overdo it. See how easy it is to overdo it. I'm just going to put just a little in there. And then in the mids, what I'm going to do, it seems odd, but I'm going to push it toward the blue just a little bit, just a little bit. Now the way looks works is I can always, using this little red light here, I can go before, after, before, after. And if I want to see the difference between, you know, just dropping out one of these uh, tiles, I can take the three-way before, after, before, after. Now, I'm not sure how much of this is going to translate to the web and to YouTube, but I'm telling you, it's just, it's, we're talking real subtleties. Without the three-way, my rocks actually look a wee bit green. When I turn the three-way back on, they look more earth tony, and Lati just looks great. I might push just a little bit more blue into the mid-tone color. So to buy off in these settings, we click OK, and we come back to our timeline. And here we can see Lati with magic bullet looks. And when I turn on my upper clip, Command B, there's the results that I got with the three-way. Now, not bad, certainly different. There's looks and uh, the three-way, and if I double-click on the three-way here, I can see what I was starting with. So that's radically different. So there's where we started with, and there's where we finished. Now we're going to add one more thing. So I'm going to double-click on the clip, click on Edit one more time, and this is my own personal fave. I'm going to go into the lens settings here, and I'm going to add the vignette. And even in its just default setting, I'm going to just pull this out just a little bit to make sure I'm not knocking down her face. But look what I'm doing. See how I have this this really subtle kind of vignette on the corners here? So I'm going to click that. And let's turn it, let's uh, audition that. On, off, on, off. Kind of cool. I'm going to leave that on. Click OK. And there's our final look. So there's Lati um, fully adjusted with magic bullet looks. And here it is as the way we started. Where we started where we ended up, where we started, where we ended up. So that's quick and dirty uh, color correction using some uh, pretty simple tools right inside of Final Cut and of course uh, there's magic bullet looks.